Praise the Lord. And I have the stars because we can look in the universe and know that he's everywhere. Yes. It's incredible. In our minds, I can't fathom, you know, we see, we know God. <clears throat> we have concepts of God. We have an idea of God. But when we look at God, we understand that there's God alone. We, we understand these basic concepts. The more you read the Bible, the more these concepts become uh, ingrained into your understanding. But when you want to separate your deities, why would you need to create people to have a relationship? Because you have a relationship with the second deity, right? So the plurality of deities is conversation and relationship. You don't need humans. But you have God. God, I can't do like God with one finger because that means he's limited in space. He's not limited by space. He's everywhere. Okay, so I don't know if this is exactly, but anyways, so God, we understand that before there was, there was nothing out, there was nothing outside of God, there was nothing but God. He spoke things with his voice into existence and they appeared. I can't imagine what that's like to speak something into existence and as you say it, it shows up. How is that a thing? That's incredible. Uh, my, my mind can't even fathom that. And we're going to meet him in heaven. The man that did that. The embodiment of that is Jesus Christ. Now praise the Lord, everybody. Awesome. Okay. Now we have a new visitor this morning. Cassie. Uh, she's visiting from Bakersfield. She came over here to visit. Uh, it's good to see you, and I remember her it was about 15 years ago, right? Yes? 15 years ago, we've known each other, so we see each other time to time. Um, when are you getting married? Or no, I'm jumping, jumping the gun here. Excuse me. Only when God's will. Is that why you're here? No, okay. <laughs> no, she's, she's cool. She's cool. She's good with, with her Bible. We talk a lot. And, oh, and also Pam, right? Pam? Yes. It's good to see Pam. I remember your name. It's good to see you visiting this morning with us. So we have Cassie and Pam, and uh, what's your name again? Forgot, spell it. Yes. <coughs> Mackenzie's. We haven't given you a sign name yet. Oh, no, we have? Oh, perfect. There we go. That's your sign name. Perfect. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start. Our engine's already warmed up and ready to go, so let's put this in gear and get going. I understand that uh, Sunday morning, this Sunday morning is going to be the last for the year of 2019. And my wife is saying, hey, hey, Angela. And Angela is here. My son, Kyle, his girlfriend is here. She's with us here too this morning. <laughs> so I'm not sure, is it, are you permanently here or not yet? <laughs> I think you have a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and start. I only have seven verses of scripture to share this morning. I hope that I'll be able to, to stretch it out into something that you enjoy. I was looking over and I felt good about teaching um, on a particular subject, and every time I tried to, to, to elaborate on it, I I, I felt like I needed to, to do it this morning. So, my subject, obey the Lord's commands. Simple. It's not a choice. It's not a recommendation. It's a commandment. So you are to obey the Lord's commands. All of his words you can find in, the, in, our, in our Bibles. Uh, I know we prayed outside uh, recently for the, for the meal, and then I'm also... That includes this class, so we'll go ahead and get started. If we look in Deuteronomy, this is uh, Moses writing. He wrote uh, the first five books of the Bible, uh, Deuteronomy being one of the last ones. And in this, he wrote, This day, the Lord thy God, that's your God. So the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, commanded thee, that's a command is a strong word. Commanded thee to do this. Sorry, to do these what? Statue. I understand that 
I understand that in the Hebrew. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, in the Hebrew, this particular, I mean, we're, we're translating this from Hebrew. So statutes here. Does anybody know what this is meaning? What this is referring to? Law. It's referring to law. But if you all, if you continue here, statutes and judgments. There's obviously a little bit of confusion. Some people will be confused. Um, you read other translations, you read some explanations, you kind of get where this is going. What does judgments mean? Rules. Rules. Okay? So laws and rules, basically. Now again, the Lord, the Lord God hath commanded thee to do these laws and rules, these statutes and judgments. So thee is referring to who? Thee is referring to the Jewish people at the time. Commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. And this do is the commandment to action. You are to follow the requirements of the law. And these are specifically at the time to keep the people of Israel separate from other countries in their worship and their lifestyle. Continues here. Thou shalt therefore keep when you keep things, you are following what it says. You don't just set it to the side and decide to do other things. That's not how keeping works. You keep. You keep it in your heart. You obey. You follow it. Therefore, keep and do. So, therefore, keep to follow and do them with all thine heart. That means everything that you've got. It's not a part part way thing, it's not a partial action just like you buy, when you buy soap and detergent from the store, you see it 99% pure we're not doing any of that here we're not following God 99% of the way just like we would in a bar of soap we need to do it 100% and this is written to the children of Israel we can't just say, oh hey, they need to do this this applies to us as well this applies to our lives as well It continues, and with all thy soul. So with everything you've got, you are to follow and to keep his commandments. 1 Samuel 15, 22. This is interesting. Uh, I'm going to elaborate a little bit on this as well. Um, once I start with this, I'll, I'll go ahead and read it and then explain. I'm sure you've seen this particular verse of scripture before. I know some of you have. Um, if you look at Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, you go back to verse 1, you understand that what's going on at this point is Samuel has picked Saul as king, anointed him as king, and said, hey, hear his word. Basically saying, hey, Saul, you need to listen and obey the word of the Lord. So, and Samuel said, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold this is powerful but you have to understand this is what Samuel Samuel is an anointed man of God he's a prophet saying behold hey listen here he's got a relationship with God behold listen here to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken to hear to, to pay attention to obey we understand to obey is necessary we are to obey and we have to listen to it we do those two things together to hearken is better than the fat of rams so when we understand what's going on contextually there's some of you may have already heard this some of you have not let me go ahead and elaborate just so those of you all understand there's somebody that came up to me, the name's not important, it's not important, the name isn't, but somebody approached me, and this person was grieving, and I was confused, and we had a conversation, and this person wasn't deaf, this person was hearing, hearing, some people sign a hearing this way, I know Jeff does, uh, hearing because you can hear, and hearing no, because deaf people can speak as well, so it doesn't really make sense, so uh, anyways, so this gentleman came up to me, 
said, hey, I, you know, I'm tore up here, I'm hurting. And so when he shared something with me, this is the first thing that came to my mind. What he did is, is it okay if I go off point a little bit? Is that all right? I'm going to stretch this class out a little bit. I don't have much material, but I have five more scriptures after this, and then we can go eat at a restaurant and do whatever, okay? Now, a gentleman came up to me, and he had shared something with me that, that made me think of this particular verse of scripture. His relative had done something or, or some way. Had, he was telling me, basically, about his relative. It wasn't some distant person. It was somebody that was directly related to him. Let me backtrack and, and fill in the story here. So there was a pastor. He was praying. And he felt in his heart to do something. So he said, you, to the pastor's assistant, you, I'm, I, feel, I feel God speaking to me about you. Understand, what we're talking about, it's God's will. The pastor has prayed continually. He has prayed for this man He's feeling God's calling on that man's life, and he knows it. So he approaches him. Understand that this pastor's assistant has also got a prayer life. He's praying, you know, and one day he feels that God is calling him. So the, the assistant pastor says, you know, I want to pray, you know, help me speak to the pastor. Of course, the pastor's got this also saying, God, help me pray, you know, pray and help me to talk to the assistant pastor. So... They ended up agreeing to meet, and they both had the same story. So obviously, this is God's will. Okay. However, understand. God told Abraham. However, however you sign Abraham, there's several different ways you can sign Abraham. I sign Abraham this way. Um, uh, I don't know if this is a regional sign. I don't know what. You guys use, yeah, Abraham. Most of you guys use Abraham this way. Okay. A lot of you sign the same. A lot of people sign Abraham this way because it's the promised land. Anyways, um, I just sign Abraham like this because the hand and the dagger was caught. And, yeah. So, so God told Abraham, hey, your wife will conceive a child. And he's saying, well, she just got dentures. Her teeth are all gone. Well, how is this going to happen? <laughs> How? She's old. How? Okay. <laughs> I know. Uh, God told Abraham, hey, this is going to happen. Abraham, he now has the obligation to obey. But he's impatient with his time. That impatience can cost a lot from the rest of your life. It can, it can cost you a lot. You need to be patient and wait on the Lord. Put the car in park, throw the e-brake on, and throw the key into the river and wait. Okay? His timing is perfect. He's working ahead of you, working things out for you. Now, going back to my story, the pastor feels, hey, I need to tell the pastor assistant about God's calling on him. The pastor assistant says, I need to talk to my pastor about God's calling on me. I think, if I remember the story right, the pastor's assistant starts the conversation. Hey, I feel the Lord calling me. Um, you know, it's my, I know it's in the future, but I feel that he's calling me. I feel like I need to take a church somewhere in that area. I'm not going to say somewhere. I'm not going to say where it is. Just it's an area. And he says, yeah, 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 I agree with you. So I'm making the story obviously shorter. Um, and so the pastor agrees. He says, yes, I agree with you. I do feel like God's calling you to go pastor at the church over there. Obviously, this is God's will. Both of the people are in the same place on this. Let's have revival. But we need to remember to be patient and wait for God's timing. Because God's timing is always right. We understand that there's his way, his time. It's his way, his time. There's one more. I forgot. There's three of them. I use this. Uh, I preach this part in my sermon a lot. His way, his time. Oh, well, whatever. I'll just keep going. It's one of those. Anyways, when I, when I come up with it and remember it, I'll share it. So I, I remember his way, his time. Ah, his will. That's what it is. His will. His way, his time, his will. It's always right. Everything works out perfectly. And if you try to, to, to 
pass it up and you try to go and do your own thing, you end up leaving the will of God. And God's will may have taken a left-hand turn that you missed and you keep going and you left it. So I, I know this story is way off the tracks here, but it's related to this particular verse of scripture. Anyway, so these two men, they were in, 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 a, in agreement that this was God's call. So the pastor says, okay, now we agree, but now you need to wait. There's no debate, no, no conversation that's necessary at that point. The pastor's assistant takes him, the pastor at his word and it's to wait, right? The pastor says, hey, we agree, but just, just hold on a second. It's not the right time. It's a four-letter word. It's very simple. You can spell it. W-A-I-T. Even if you're an awkward speller, you can still spell that. It's an easy word to spell. Four letters, okay? W-A-I-T, okay? Four letters. The pastor says, wait. The person says, okay. He keeps it. He says, well, I'm going to wait. He waits for a while, waits for a while. And then after a period of time, he becomes, re he becomes restless. Now, we need to be careful to not become restless in our own way because we can change what we feel the will of God is to do our own thing because we become restless. Right? So we can't become restless in, our, in what we're doing. What we need to do is stay busy doing the will of God. So teaching. This pastor says, uh, for the, the case of this pastor assistant, he needs to be more of an assistant. Teach. Um, help Bible studies, etc. He has a lot of things he can do instead of being restless. But he's restless. So then he approaches the pastor again and says, hey, <clears throat> again, don't follow your feeling here. Your feelings can lead you astray. You need to understand his will, his way, his time. Yes. Thank you. I, I was just testing to see if some of you remember. One of you did. Okay. No, none of you. No, nobody else. No. I, I forgot. So feeling is a dangerous place to be because he said, you know, I feel that it's time. I feel that it's time. The pastor says, well, um, you, you do need to wait. He says, okay. So he goes back to what he's doing, and again, restless. That's all he can think about. That's all he wants to talk about. And then he approaches the pastor. Now, this is the third time he's approached the pastor about this particular incident. Now we know there's something off here. This is the third time. You shouldn't really even be going for a second. If you do, don't even go for the third. Once you hit the second, I mean, now we're questioning if you're going to keep going back. First one, he says, wait, you're waiting. God, thank you for your confirmation. Thank you for your word. You'll work it out when the time is right. Let's go back to what I've been doing. That's how it's supposed to be. Yes, prepare yourself for the future. Yes, that's so true. Yes, there's possibly a way that he needs to be you know, in a place of training or a place of, of being prepared for it. Now, let me go ahead and finish this particular story. Uh, this is the third time. And... Um, the first, they agreed, hey, yes, God's will. Second time, he comes up to the pastor and says, hey. Third time, he tells the pastor. He didn't ask the pastor at this point. It's dangerous what just happened here. First, they said, yes, it's the will of God. Second, they said, the pastor's assistant came up and said, hey, what about this? Third time, he approached the pastor. He said, no, no, no. We're doing this. It's my way. It's my time. It's dangerous. So he says, you know what, pastor, I have to go. But what the pastor then says is, that's your move. That's your move. That's your thing. You want to do it? I don't need to have a debate with you. You know. You know I say wait. But at this point, you're telling me. Now you're going to go off on your own. The, pastor, the assistant said, yep, this is time. This is right. But you notice the change. Normally, the pastor would announce, tell the church, hey, we're going to pray for him. We're going to anoint him, showing that this is God's will. We're anointing him to send him off. You notice that's usually how it happens. If he doesn't, we understand that he's kind of doing his own thing. That didn't happen. That, the, the pastor did not. This is still the pastor's assistant. He's still sitting on the platform with the pastor at the time. Now, and like I said, the third time he has this conversation with the pastor, he tells him, hey, I'm leaving. And decides that he's going to go to the place that they agreed on in the first conversation. And then, of course, the pastor says, that's your move. You know, you do you. So what the pastor assistant does is he sold his house, sold his furniture, sold his wife. No, I'm kidding. He didn't do that. <laughs> no, he took his wife with him. <laughs> took his wife with him. Okay. Sold everything. Sold his house, sold his furniture, I'm trying to remember exactly. I'm not. 
adding to it, but sold his house, sold his furniture, got rid of all of that, took all of the money, quite a bit of money, of course, paid his tithes, got all of his money, drove to the city that he felt called to, and said, this is where it is. Put money down, bought things, paid for a lease on the building, did all of that, got everything squared away, and said, we're ready. Started preaching and witnessing, and people started coming, things started happening, it was wonderful. The church started growing, and all I know, it was, it was a low number, but it was going. It was growing quickly, for that matter. It was, so only, it was only there for a short time. People were getting the Holy Ghost, people were being baptized in Jesus' name. However, remember the beginning of the story. The pastor didn't want this to happen just then. He said, you need to wait. Okay? And then overnight almost, it fell apart. The city sued him, said, you're not supposed to do this or this or this or this. What that shows is God was not working. God was not finished working out the situation ahead of your arrival. God is working things out before you get there. He's working things out before, you, before the time is right. And when it is ready, he'll call you. He's working ahead of you for your, before your arrival. He's planning and preparing it for you. But what this pastor assistant effectively has done is interrupted the process and lost everything. Right. He interrupted the process and lost everything. He lost everything. Reputation, gone. He went back to his pastor and said, you know, I am so sorry. I've got the revelation. I, I jumped the gun here. It's not his time. I went ahead and did my own thing. And the pastor said, yes. Yes, you're welcome back, but you can join the saints, sit in the, in the congregation. Became depressed, backslid. The point of that story is you need to obey. He knows more than you. He knows what's going on, going, going on ahead of you. I know I'm, I'm pulling this. You see my point, right? I'm, I'm stretching this out a little bit, but you see my point. And this, this particular verse of scripture is when, when the story was told to me is what came into my mind. And he said, you know, when he said, I'm going to do, I'm going to sacrifice my time, my money, my this, because I'm going to do the will. No, you need to obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, second one here. This particular verse of scripture is interesting. Um, all of the scriptures in our Bibles, uh, there's way too many. I mean, at this point, we're just picking and choosing if we want to set a lesson. Um, these few are, are good. Um, but I was particularly picking scriptures that reference the obedience of the Lord's commands. So if you look at Matthew 7, 21. This is on the Sermon on the Mount. This is chapter 5, uh, 6, and, and 7. Um, this particular portion of scripture is out of uh, chapter 7. Um, and I know people say this a lot. I mean, you've seen this before. And let me go ahead and ask you something after this. <clears throat> I, I love the word of God. And, and I love analyzing word by word what our Bible says. And, and, and by the way, I have some awesome news. I got the pulpit commentary, which I've been wanting. There's 23 volumes that comes in the set. And just one book. I took it out. I opened up the page. And I read a quarter of one page out of the 23 volumes. And it got me right away. It said, Jesus on the cross. When people looked at Jesus on the cross, they received a revelation that there was sin in their life. Without the death on the cross, there is no recognition of sin. Because of the death on the cross, the people are able to instantaneously recognize I'm not living up to what I need to do. And this is only the quarter of one page of 23 volumes. I'm ready to get some stake in the word of God for the, for the year of 2020. Some of you are ready. Uh, people who gave it to me, my wife and Kyle and my daughter-in-law soon to be. I think she likes it. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. Okay, I'm looking forward to 2020. The year 2020, I know a lot of you are looking forward to it. Do you expect some good things in the year? 
Uh, I sometimes in my mind I think I want something different for this deaf class. I want something to change. I don't want it to always. I mean, it doesn't have to be a permanent change. It could be once in a while. I think why don't we have like a church service in here? Why don't we have a church service? You know, just certain things like that. But we'll we'll feel what God wants with this. And of course, not my time, not my way. We're gonna work it out with God. Of course, gotta get past the approval, right? Okay, He knows. So, chapter seven, verse twenty-one. And Matthew says, "Not everyone that saith unto me." This is the Lord. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But, but, now we understand. We're saying one thing, however, something's going to change here in a second. Negative but positive. Positive but negative. There's a change, right? Does that make sense? But he, which is anyone, but he or anyone that doeth the will of my father. Now, if you look, Abraham was supposed to do the will of the Lord, understanding what he had said about his wife Sarah being being able to conceive and have a child. But in his impatience, and the wife, of course, is saying, you know, I'm old. I'm not going to have a child. You have a child with another lady. That causes a problem. That was a costly mistake. And that, cost, that was a costly mistake that he had to pay for for the rest of his life. Right. Abraham, right. Abraham is supposed to obey the word of the Lord. He has to listen and accept what God has said. And that's a good example of for each and every one of us. In Abraham's situation, in your situation, it might be similar in certain aspects. You listen to another person. You listen to God. You, you, need, you need to be listening to God because something else can come into your life and you start getting sidetracked and you don't listen to what God's will is in your life. The will of my father... Where was I at? Oh, yep. I think you need to move here. You need help me. You can help me follow along with the scripture. Nobody's helping me here. You're the only one. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the will of... The will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now, we understand when we look at this, we think, well, I'm not really getting what's this to say. Let me go ahead and explain it. Not everybody who says, hey, Lord, Lord, those people that do it, doesn't mean you've taken the necessary steps to convert. Just because you're saying, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean you're saved. Okay? When you're converted, you receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost, you're baptized in Jesus' name, You've, you've finished the steps. You've done it. Yeah. Just like accepting the Lord Jesus Christ is not exactly a step, right? You can't be saved by that. That's not conversion. Conversion is a relationship with God. There's, it's more than just accepting. Any questions? I think uh, the next part will go a little bit quicker. Your whole heart is required. Not just half of your heart. God wants your whole heart. He doesn't want half of it. He doesn't want a portion of it. Not 99%. Okay, he wants your whole heart. He want, it's all, that's what's required. Psalms 119. I love this particular verse of scripture. Psalm 119.10. Uh, I think about 10, 7, 10 minutes I'll be done. Now it reads here, with my whole heart, with my whole heart, have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander, or to leave, or to, to be separate from thy commandments. Don't wander, we're not, let me not wander away from this thing right here. Okay. Any questions on this particular one? No? Okay. 
Jeremiah 9, 29, 13. This is a true, very true verse of scripture. This is really interesting. I've read this particular verse of scripture before. I've read through it. I read by it. And it's okay. You know, it's wonderful, great. And I don't think much of it. But I believe we were in the old sanctuary at the time. We were at the old sanctuary or we had just moved to the new building here. Um, I know my wife, Diane, and sister Linda Hendricks, they both had gone to BJ's. They were at the restaurant. I think she, I'm pretty sure she'll remember. They went to BJ's. And they were having a conversation. They were gossiping or whatever. No, not that. But they were just having a conversation. And one of them, I said, where's the receipt? And something came out onto the table and said, paid from somebody else. Remember that? Yeah. Somebody put down this particular verse of scripture on the bill. Somebody paid and look at Jeremiah 29, 13. So they get this. So my wife shows me this and of course I thought it was excellent. And so I'm including into this lesson now. But you remember that? It says, and ye shall seek me, not we, not us, ye shall seek me, not somebody else, me, just me, by myself, and ye shall seek me and find me. And you understand that as you do this, you see this in the scripture. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. So when you do this, you're going to find me. You got to do it with your whole heart. When you do that, you're going to find me. It's a wonderful pers uh, portion of scripture here. I've got two more scriptures, maybe a few more minutes, and then we'll be good to go. Deuteronomy 6.5. Again. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Do some of you some of you know what that is? Yeah? Yeah? Good. This is this is the writing of Moses. Verse 4. You know that? Verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart love requires action if you don't if you don't have love the opposite of love is apathy carelessness I'm not going to act on anything that's the opposite of love So you see, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. And again, love requires action, but it also requires your humility and your obedience to the word of God. You obey the Lord's command. You even obey your pastor, right? And with all thy soul, and with all thy might, which means everything, all encompassing, you love him with everything, regardless what, uh, of anything else. I believe there's one, one more verse of scripture, and then we're done. I think there's a, there's a lot to chew here. I'm just throwing up quite a few scriptures for you. So one more that'll uh, fill you up, and then you can uh, chew on those scriptures uh, and think about the word of God. Okay. <coughs> Proverbs 3 and 5. This is one of my favorites here. I learned this particular verse of scripture from, yeah, you may not necessarily know who, but it's a woman with Mr., uh, sorry, uh, Sister Minshew. She's from Texas. Uh, she lived in Houston. She was an interpreter, Sister Minshew, and she was a great lady. Um, and she shared this particular verse of scripture. It was a, quite a while ago. I was confused about something. Um, and she said, hey, look at this particular verse of scripture. And, and uh, since then, I've thought about this. 
And this is the last one here, Proverbs 3, 5, then I'll be done. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now we know your whole heart is required of this thing. We gotta obey him, but we also have to put it, our whole heart into this. Trust in the Lord with all, all. Read my lips, all. I'm not like uh, the former President Bush saying, read my lips, no new taxes. Not, not that, that didn't work, okay, not that. Read my lips, all, all. There's no exceptions. Not, yeah, well, we'll just exclude this. No, all of it. You love him? Yes? Do it with your whole heart, okay? Nothing left. You give it all to him, okay? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And say, hey, hey, listen here. And lean, lean. This is the sign for lean, but when you turn it to yourself, lean. Don't lean into your own understanding. Lean not into thine own understanding. So don't be saying, hey, you know what? I know this. I got this figured out. I think I've got it all figured out. I've got it sorted. I know what I'm doing. That's when you fail. You throw, it out, you throw that away, and you trust in the Lord regardless of what's going on. You say, well, that's, that's going to cost my life. Well, trust him. Whatever the cost is, go and do it. Trust him. Thank you. I see some of you, uh, there's, so much, there's so much you can't fit it all in. Um, you know, year 2020, we go into the year and a lot of people make some promises, New Year's resolutions. Um, reading this is incredible because we are to search and we are to trust. And for the new year, that new, my New Year's resolution is to do that. Search and trust. With my whole heart. Yes. Maybe that, that may lesson. I don't know about you, but that lesson was definitely for her then. So search, trust, and obey. Yes, search, trust, and obey. Exactly. Um, I like what you said. And, and this is, this is, I was ready. I was putting things together. I was making a lesson. I was building it. I said, hey, you know what? And I did it for four days on a particular subject I'm going to do it later. But I felt this had to go on pause. So I put that out, hung it up in my, I have like, oh, so many of them. I have so many PowerPoints that I'm not even done with because I feel like I had to change my lesson. In 2020, I may use some of these that I keep putting off to the side, but what? obey. I'm going to put this, I'm going to, I'm going to teach about obedience and some of you are, are, are taking that. We're not going to just look at her because we all need to do this. It all needs to be a personal thing. Yes, I'm teaching it, but I need to obey it. I want 2020 to be an excellent year. I want it to be the best year in history. I believe that some of you are taking this and saying, you know what, I'm going to take 2020 on and I'm going to be ready. This one right here too, with your whole heart. Hallelujah. Question Seven twenty one. Okay. Okay, I'm done. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do. Some great blessings, quadruple, however many much more size increases that we can get in this deaf class. That'll be awesome. We won't have enough chairs. That's some bad news, but I like that. I like bad news as far as that being not enough chairs. That's a good set of bad news. Let's go ahead and pray in closing. Kyle, pray in closing for this class. Come all the way up here. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for us understanding that we need to love you with our whole heart and we are to obey everything that you say and I pray that we take it and we move forward with that in the new year. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.